Hi there! I am Heidi Parks and I am a quilter. You can see how I love to snuggle with my quilts. I also love to live in a house with handmade things. I made this couch with my dad a few years ago and I sewed my shirt myself out of an old dress. I used scraps from that dress to make these leaves on this quilt. I love to sew and there are a lot of ways that you can use a quilt. For example, this is a small quilt that I made of a map of Milwaukee along Lake Michigan. The art museum, the Milwaukee Art Museum, would be right down here on the map. When you're making a quilt, there are several steps. The first step is making a quilt top. This is a quilt top. It's just one piece of fabric that I've sewn multiple pieces of fabric together to make, so it's very thin. The next step is that I layer a quilt. So this quilt has my quilt top on the front, Underneath it is a layer of cotton batting. It's very fluffy. And on the back is a thin piece of fabric that goes across the whole back. You can piece multiple pieces of fabric together to do this too. And then the last step is having a finished quilt like this one. Here I've sewn the quilt top, the batting, and the backing fabric together. This one has a sleeve on the back so that it can hang on the wall. And I've signed my name with embroidery at the bottom. Let's take a closer look at how we put the layers of a quilt together. Today, we're going to make a little quilt. To do that, I have a piece of an old skirt, another piece of this green dress that made my shirt that I'm wearing, and some fabric that I previously did some applique on. This is a whip stitch and this is a running stitch. I have some thread. This is pearl cotton size eight, sewing needles, a scissors, and some thimbles. These are very important for protecting my hands. I'll keep a pushing thimble and a pulling thimble on my fingers. So I am going to begin by creating a design on my batting that I think will make a good quilt. And you can see this is nice and small. This is a small quilt that my friend Zach made for me. And I love the way that it fits in my pocket or could be used to hang on the wall or even as an ornament. I'll lay out my fabric on my batting and find a design that I like. I like using the original seams. So here we can keep some of that pattern. Now flip it over and cut along the edge of the batting. Now that this is lined up, I can add some of my green fabric from my dress. I think I'll be able to turn the edge of this over and make a pretty design this way. I'm going to fold with my fingers and make sure there's enough of an overlap here that the batting won't show. And then I can use a straight pin to hold this in place. I'll fold it over here as well and create a nice corner using my pin. Now I can flip it over and I can cut away the extra fabric. I'm going to use some of this red thread to sew my green dress onto my yellow skirt. I'll use a quilter's knot to wrap three times towards the tip of the needle, pinch, and pull through. We can also do a technique that's called quilt as you go. So I'm gonna put the back of my fabric on my batting, just 
just arranging it to look pretty, making sure I have an extra border around the edge. We'll use that later. And I can hold the fabric in place with the backing with probably just two safety pins. I think will be enough to do the job well. So now with my thread, I'll do a running stitch along the seam sewing through. I like to create a lot of the movement here by moving my non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed and I'm holding the needle with my right hand. And you can see that I'm moving my left hand a lot. Once I've pulled the thread through, I can give it a tug so that it doesn't get gathered, but instead it will lay flat. And I'm just moving up and down and this rubber gripper is helping me to pull the thread through. I really care a lot about protecting my hands and my fingers when I'm sewing. When I get to a corner, sometimes I like to do a whip stitch. I've come out the top of the applique, and now I'm going to go in from the back and up again. So this stitch is whipping around the edge which makes it extra secure at the corner, which can sometimes be a little bit fragile. I'll do one last whip stitch, and then I'll continue with the running stitch to the edge. Now you can see that I've sewn through both layers, and I'm gonna do a little bit more quilting. This quilting will just connect the front and the back of the quilt more securely. If your thread comes out of the needle, you can just thread it through again. No worries if you have that accident. And I'm just spinning around. This is called improvisational quilting, where I get to let my intuition guide me about where it would be fun to sew through the quilt. I'm gonna start sewing through my green dress now. Now that everything is nicely quilted and I've gone through all those layers, I'm gonna tie a quilter's knot. I fold the thread, go through the hole and pull tight. I'll do that twice. The last step when making a quilt is binding. I'm going to fold the edge of this fabric over and then fold it up onto the quilt. If I want the edge to be this big, I can leave it the way it is. Otherwise, I can trim it down to make a skinnier edge. I have this pin cushion that my friend Bob made for me and I'm gonna take another needle and thread with a good color on it to go around. One more quilter's knot. And I'll sew around the edge of this quilt. If I get to an area that's a little bit tricky, maybe like the corner, I can use my whip stitch some more to hold things in place really well. And then when I get to the end of the quilt, I would just tie another tailor's knot. 
it can be pretty to leave the knots so that you can see them too. Or you can tuck in, tie your knot, and then pop it through to the back. To add a little extra excitement to the quilt, I'm going to put a few more knots on the surface now. I can just tie my knot, dip into the fabric, and then tie another knot. And there will be a nice little collection of knots here to create a focal point. And here is my finished quilt. You can see it has a beautiful border with the blue fabric. The knots are a focal point and the back looks real pretty as well. A small quilt like this can be used for a doll. It can go in someone's pocket. You could add it to a backpack to make it more beautiful. Or you could even add a string and hang it to the wall just like a painting. There are lots of special ways to give things like this as a gift. I remember when I was little, I made this guinea pig and it's still so beautiful sitting on my shelf even now. Thank you to the Milwaukee Art Museum for hosting me and I hope that you will also have fun with a needle and thread. Remember, if you're going to use clothes to make a quilt, make sure that you have permission to do that. Bye!